Hey everybody. Well, we know so much has changed during the pandemic and perhaps no more so than in schools. Last week we talked to students, Aaron and Echo. Echo is a, was a high school student at Gabo Catholic Junior Senior High School and Aaron was a graduating senior also at Connorsville Area High School. This time around, we're gonna to talk to their teachers to find out a little bit about how they've gotten through uh, these last few weeks. You know, this is all about living better now. And so they've certainly been among those so much challenged to be able to do so and have found ways to do so through this difficult and challenging time. With me today are Erin and Echo's teachers. We have with us Dr. Jamie Brooks and Amy Witt. Dr. Jamie Brooks is from Geibel Catholic Junior Senior High School. You're the math teacher. And Amy Witt, you're in the business education department at the high school. So thanks for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm, I want to ask you both, um, and I'll start with I'll start with Amy on this. What has been the greatest challenge being a teacher um, in the school? What has been been the greatest challenge, and what's been the greatest reward during these past few weeks? Um, well, I think the greatest challenge for me um, is losing that um, connection with your students in terms of seeing them um, every day and uh, reaching them in a way um, that helps them individually. Um, because, you know, a lot of teaching is about that personal connection. Um, with the same, in the same avenue of that is uh, being online and finding different ways to reach those students individually, whether it be through Google Meets or emails or just being available um, to them, um, trying to, you know, get them to um, stay on board with you and understand the content that you're that you're teaching them. Um, while it has been a struggle, it's also been a reward because many of my students have emailed or reached out to me, you know, thanking me for you know, helping them or going above and beyond um, and being flexible for them. Um, yes, we have a school day, but, you know, a lot of students work and, you know, being available after school hours when they're able to do their homework or, you know, whatever you needed to do to get them through uh, this difficult time. Um, and the biggest reward is just knowing that, you know, you've helped them or made them made some sort of impact uh, on their life. Um, you know, kind of getting through this um, unchartered territory. Very good. And in, in your role with um, the students, what exactly did you do with them and for them? Well, um, I teach a variety of different classes. Um, um, through classes, I've just tried to be available, whether it be through Google Meet, um, whether it be through email, whatever the student's preference um, or was. Um, I know personally, um, myself and uh, two other teachers from the middle school, um, you know, our seniors have missed out on a lot. Um, and that for me, you know, looking back on, you know, what your senior year is, and then also thinking about the great students that we have at Connellsville area. I mean, I can't say enough about our senior class. They're really a special group of kids. Um, so we wanted to do something for them. Um, and so myself and um, Sarah Bruski and Gina Irwin from the middle school, um, were kind of thinking like, what, what could we do? Um, and so we sort of wanted to have a sea of seniors um, on our hillside between the, the middle school and the high school to sort of say, you know, um, we're there for you. We, we, we know that this is hard. And, and so the, all of the teachers um, from the Connellsville Area School District uh, pitched in and that project was completely funded by all of our teachers because, you know, every single one of us um, at Connellsville, it's a, it's a neat place. And I think if you, you know, are at Connellsville, one of the things that is like tried and true. I mean, I grew up here, I came back here to teach and Connellsville people really pull together um, in difficult times. Um, and it says a lot about our teaching community. Absolutely, a beautiful community that we are in. Interesting to hear you say too that um, it was perhaps all hours, you know, that, that you, because they might be able to do their work, they're doing their homework even um, in, in, in the evening. So interesting to hear that perspective on that too. 
So um, thanks, thank you for that. And also what you did, what you, you and the other teachers did at, on the hillside for the seniors. That's the reason we're actually on this on the Zoom um, interview today because, because so much because of that, because I wanted to be able to share what you've done um, based on especially what the kids have said um, and what it's meant to them, Aaron and Echo and, and, and speaking for, for students everywhere that have, uh, I, I know, uh, love and appreciate their teachers all the more now. Um, and uh, so I, I'm so glad you were able to share that little piece of, piece of that, very important. Okay, so Dr. Brooks, let me talk to you. Tell me a little bit about um, the greatest challenge and the greatest reward you've seen during these past few weeks. Um, well, well, first, if I may just address Amy's um, comments for a second and, and say thank you for everything that the Connorsville school teachers did. I happened to have a child in the district in the ninth grade, and I felt that he had a, a really good continuity of education and some good social interaction. Now, if I can lead into what Gobble Catholic did, I would say we faced the same challenges. We wanted to keep the social interaction while still trying to follow our curriculum and get the kids to learn on top of everything that was going on. Um, I would say that the social connection took precedence over everything because we knew their lives were disrupted. And that's very hard for teenagers, especially I know having an only child to be 15 years old and be quarantined with your parents. So I tried to think of how he would feel and how these other students would feel. So I did a couple of things. I'm a very old fashioned math teacher. I've been teaching for over 20 years and I teach example after example. I teach bell to bell and kids know that I, I'm a right on the board, show a bunch of examples type of person. And how can you do that in the situation of remote learning we were thrown into? So I started a YouTube channel and I put a whiteboard in my kitchen area and I just started putting my lessons up there. And I taught like I would teach in the regular classroom. Felt kind of weird because nobody's raising their hand to go to the restroom and I don't have to do a uniform check like I would have to at Godville Catholic, so it was a little bit different. But I thought about the positive things that could come out of that. Kids could pause that video if they didn't understand that and rewind. Um, maybe I went too fast on something for some people, or they needed to watch the video again, or if they needed a break, they could pause the video. And then it's always there. So now I have a YouTube channel with a lot of videos for, for the students to have for the future. And then I went into the Zoom meeting. Um, I tried that for a while because I wanted it to feel more like a regular classroom. And um, Teaching seven through 12, I had a wide range of experience. The seventh graders, it seemed, nobody mutes their mics, everybody talks at once, you see everybody's pet, yeah. and you're still trying to get through the lesson. Um, the older kids, like I teach a college in the high school course, the older kids were more, they didn't put their face up, some of them, they were just muted, black screen, hoping they listened to the lesson. But um, I, I think we did our best and I think we came together. I, I made my videos public because I thought maybe there's some child in some other school district that needed this algebra lesson on how to graph a line or systems of equations. And I just said, anybody who needs this today, here you go. This, is, this was a time I think for teachers to come together and help each other out, no, no matter what district we were in or, or where we taught. And um, I think a lot of good came from it. And we realized we're in it for the kids. And I think this was a time for the schools to shine. And I think, I think we did a great job. Very good. Very innovative, very creative um, ways to, uh, to teach differently. Um, to be able to see how students respond to that. So that's really neat. What is your YouTube channel uh, called, Jamie? It's, um, it's just Jamie Brooks um, EDD. My, my, my son gave, gave it that, that name. I, I kind of took over his channel and then we deleted his videos and put mine on. 
and he got to, he was filming me and he got to a point where he said mom this is not good we have to move this we're making a studio in the spare bedroom i bought him a camera with a tripod and it became more professional he put some music in there so it, nice. it evolved as we went through quarantine <laughs> That's really neat. And, and certainly a mother-son bonding experience as well, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and so, and so and interestingly, too, in, in connecting the two, your son um, is a student at the high school? At Connellsville Area High School. Mm -hmm. Okay. So would he have learned from Amy in any way? I don't think he has taken a computer science class yet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He definitely has that interest. <laughs> That's great. That's, that is really awesome um, to be able to see that. And also something else you touched upon was that uh, it sounds like the teachers were really supporting each other. You both touched on that. You know, Amy um, working together certainly in creating uh, that whole sign experience. And I'm sure in many, many, many other ways just in being able to help teachers teach their classes. Let me jump back to that. And I want to jump back to Amy on this. Um, how, how did you support each other? How did, so Jamie had uh, done a YouTube, she kind of, you know, you know, was figuring that out and, and made that really something that is going to be a great thing going forward. But what did you assist the teachers in doing and how did you support each other in making that education um, flourish during this time? Um, uh, well, one of the things that I think we're, we're all good about is, you know, being able to, you know, drop something and, you know, and help one another. Um, I know in the very beginning, um, for a lot of people, it was um, a shift in the way that you do things. You, um, like Jamie said, you have very traditional teachers. So how, how, do they, how do they make that work? You have teachers that, you know, in our building that have embraced the technology. So um, I know in the very beginning, I was on a lot of, we use Google at Connellsville, a lot of Google Meets, you know, sharing my screens, people would email me, I'd call them, talk them through it, and those were the conversations um, that were going on across the district. I mean, I have, I didn't not only help people in my high school, but, you know, people that I've worked with in the middle school, um, my son's first grade teacher, you know, I'd see something on there and I'd, you know, send her um, an email and say, you might want to fix this because just from a different, you know, standpoint, because um, a lot of times when you're using something from like we use Google Classroom and what you see um, is different from the student's perspective. So, you know, having a student in the Connellsville Area School District, I have a, a first grader, you know, being able to see what he sees, I was able to help her. Um, and I used to be in, a, in a, a tech integrator role. So a lot of times people will come to me. So it's one of those things, this technology is sort of second nature um, to me. So we've taught a lot of teachers how to do screencasts where they, um, they're able to record their computer screen and do, do videos that way. Um, we've, we've used all sort of different kinds, kinds of tech tools, you know, Google Forms, Google Classroom, um, whatever way we can um, communicate um, and, and educate our kids in a, in a, pro in a proper way. So, um, it was one of those things that, you know, um, and then you reach out, um, you know, I couldn't say enough about our elementary music teacher and the lessons that he did for, um, our K one and two, you know, um, so that's basic, basically, you know, we just sort of come together, like Jamie said, and in any way we could support. Um, and we try to use those tools that we were asking our kids to use. And I can't tell you how many administrators and teachers have said, oh my goodness, what I've learned in, the ma in these last two months and what I've put together, like, I don't know why I struggled with it before because I can do this, you know? Um, and so there has been a lot of successes in, in, in that respect, I would have to say, in our school district. And, and, uh, and teachers have went above and beyond, and they've learned more, and they've, they've done more. And, and um, while the situation wasn't ideal, I think that every single one of us has grown um, as, as a teacher, as an educator, um, even as a parent. Very good. That's, that's great. And it certainly sounds like you all came together um, really in a special way. Talk about teacher, teacher bonding. You hit on something I'd love to just touch upon it for a second. You talked about the first grader, talked about the, the um, elementary teacher. Tell me if you would um, what that maybe looked like and how did the littlest ones respond? How did that, how did that work? Share that with me, Amy, if you would. 
Well, I can't say enough about um, my son's teacher, uh, Mrs. Stafford um, at Bullskin Elementary. She made it as simple as possible, but without, um, I, don't, I, don't, I mean, obviously they've missed a lot, but she's made it as simple as possible and they were still able to, you know, um, make gains and strides. Um, I know for not only her, but, you know, um, the librarian there, the music teacher, um, so the setup looked like this, um, Mrs. Stafford's Google Classroom, she broke it up basically into a daily story that, this, that she had a YouTube channel too that she read to the kids because she did that every single day. And then um, she had um, daily assignments for ELA and math. Um, and usually it was some sort of screencast of her um, teaching the content, um, the students reading the stories and then going over, um, it, whether it be through worksheet form or whatever it might be. Um, and then everything was turned back in digitally to her. Um, and then she gave us uh, extra work um, that we needed to do. A lot of the parents were asking for more for their, for their kids. Um, I can't say enough about it probably took me maybe one time of showing my first grader what to do. Um, he would sit beside me as I worked and um, he really didn't need any help. Kids in terms of technology are, are resilient. And I view it as, I, I always say to him, Cam, you can't, you can't break it. You can, all, you can always undo it. So don't be afraid to touch buttons. They have, you know, the touchable computer screens. And so he needed to figure that out um, and that, that sort of com component. And they used, um, their Chromebooks in school, but they never brought them home prior to, to that. Um, the librarian had wonderful STEM lessons and stories, um, set out the accelerated reader program. So after the kids were reading, they could take, take tests. The music teacher, um, we did gym lessons. Um, the, the gym teacher did a daily uh, gym lesson along with some activity. And then, um, you know, um, excuse, excuse me, weekly weekly gym lesson. So these are things that prior to, I don't know that, um, I don't know that any, that, that he had Google Classroom for anything other than his uh, regular content teacher, but what they did as far as the itinerants go, um, that there were some really good lessons and they've um, stepped out of their comfort zone and it, it was like they've been doing it for years. So I can't say, say enough. And also the principal, Ms. Porter, she, she held, um, Google Meets, um, Camden's class did Google Meets as well, um, where the, she would bring in guest um, speakers and they were people from the building that came on that kids hadn't been seeing, the librarian, um, the, the reading specialist, um, just for that social interaction too. And those Google Meets were more of like, they would bring something from their household to share. And they, um, it was completely for like nothing academic, just social. And those happened at seven o'clock at night. So again, that's a teacher that's going outside of the school day, you know, to sort of uh, reach, um, reach those little ones. And, and, and they participated. And my son was very happy to, to see his friends and he hadn't seen in so long. And it so gave him a little bit of that normalcy that they, that they needed. That's, that's so neat. And um, something that, that, I, that you're touching on, I'll go back to, to Jamie on this too. Um, I'll come back. So Jamie, um, being able to be into their homes, as you said, some of them may have had their screen black and um, you know, you're, you're, you're touching, Amy, uh, well, a wide variety of age groups and um, disciplines along those lines. Jamie, but here you are now in an interesting situation where they're meeting you in your home and you're meeting them in their home. So let me go to, to Jamie on this and ask you, what did that, how did that foster a relationship or how did that foster an understanding uh, with you between you and your student, Jamie, on that? Well, uh, I would say God for Catholic being a small school, we already have sort of a family connection. Everybody knows everybody. And so this only deepened that connection, I believe. It just made you feel like we're all hanging out at home together, you know? So it was more, I think it brought us closer together in a, in a way to have that deeper family connection. Very good. Okay. And so what's the one thing I'll, I'll probably end with this, although I do want to say, I do want to give a shout out. You mentioned the principal, Amy. And I do want to give a shout out to the principals um, at all the schools within the Connellsville Area School District at Geibel, um, Ms. Nickler, 
um, certainly Mrs. Ms. Solon at Con Area Catholic and all the principals out there that have had to lead the charge in creating this, this new way of teaching and learning on the fly quickly. Now, some, and in some cases you were ready and prepared, you could do this, in other cases you had to figure it out on the spot. So really have to give a lot of credit to the principals for leading the charge and letting the teachers, as it certainly sounds like, have the freedom to, to, to decide what's the best way for them to, to be able to you know, provide that lesson, to give that lesson to them, whether it's gym outside doing something or um, you know, music or however it is, the YouTube channels, uh, certainly a special time. So tell me, we'll end with this on, with both of you, and we'll go back to Amy first. What's the one thing that you plan to hold on to that you've done differently that you feel that is going to benefit everyone going forward? Um, that's a tough question. Um, I think um, one of the things, you know, when you're inside your when you're inside your regular classroom and you you always try to give a variety of options to your students because you have a variety of different learners. You know, I you can't stand up there every day and 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 do direct instruction, and you, you can't give them projects every day too. Um, I think for me, one of the things that that this experience sort of just reiterated is that um, because I've helped students in very different ways and seeing what some kids need and some kids don't. Um, when you're not in an ideal classroom situation, and you can kind of, you have some kids that won't ask questions, but you can tell that they they need help or they're struggling. Um, I think for me is to sort of just be mindful and to maintain that that idea of when I approach every lesson that I continually need to have multiple ways to to reach it reach a kid, um, making sure that they get it, um, making sure that they understand it, um, and so. Um, I guess for me, that's that's sort of um, it isn't anything new, but it just really re, it just really solidified that that that's extremely important. And the flexibility as an educator is definitely um, extremely important in this you know very um, different um, way of teaching, um, along so um, in the traditional classroom as well. Very good. Thanks, thanks, Amy. How about you, Jamie? What's the one thing you want to hold on to? Well, I know what we will be holding on to at Geibel Catholic, and that is um, our learning management system of Schoology. Amy mentioned they use Google Classroom. We use Schoology at Geibel Catholic, and so all of the lessons from day one of remote learning, they're still on Schoology. So the plan moving forward for Geibel Catholic, we got a letter from the superintendent, is that we will be in a building in the fall and the plan will be that not only will we be teaching in the building, now we will be doing everything on Schoology as well. So you will have that backup if something should happen. Now we already had that in place. We had a, a snow day that we, we use that as a flexible instruction day. That's why we were, were able to roll right into remote learning without taking time off. But now the plan moving forward, what we are keeping is Schoology. So we will have, it'll be like you have a class online and you're doing the same thing in the classroom type of situation. So if, if a child is ill, there's class. You, you, you know what you have in class. And it's a great backup for the teachers, for the kid that goes home and tells their parent, oh, I never did that. Well, there was a lesson, right? You, you, you did it, you, you, you know? So it's, it's right there and it's gonna be very helpful. And, and the big takeaway from this, I think our kids learned how to deal with adversity. So we all learned that together. And I think it just made everybody grow closer together as schools, as communities. And I think we're all taking that as we move forward. That is good. That's a good, that's good insight. Certainly they've never gone through perhaps anything more strange or difficult in their life and, and if everything going forward um, hopefully will feel a little less challenging to deal with because they've made it through this. So they're learning that lesson early on, which I think will certainly help them. You know, we talk about um, the greatest generation being the, the senior citizens, the elderly that we have right now. And, 
and this may very well be our, our next greatest generation for all the things that they have were born into and are going through um, and they're only children and up to 18 years old at this point talking to both of you. So, so much good has, has come out of this. And I want to thank you both. Also want to give a little shout out to not only the, the principals, but to the parents who had to step in and in those teacher shoes and, and, and support their children while they've been working or, you know, whatever the other um, obstacles in their path were on that particular uh, day, getting through that. So certainly so much has changed, but so many things perhaps have gotten better. Um, we've all, we're making it through this together. And going forward, it sounds like talking to both of you, we're ready for whatever's next and that we can do things even better. And I'm really glad to know and to hear that we will be coming back together in the fall. So you'll have that, that social and emotional piece of that, that, that being with your students is so important. And so the impact that you can have on them will certainly continue to be greater for sure. So I'm just really glad to be able to talk to both of you and for you to be able to share all the great things that you're doing. So thank you for that. And uh, thank you so much for, for being here and keep doing all that you're doing. Keep inspiring as you do. And we'll watch Jamie Brooks EDD <laughs> YouTube. Okay. You know, math was never my thing. So um, I actually did log on and Jamie, I, I, I tried to, to 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 learn and it's been so long but I want I want you to know that that would have that would have made all the difference in my life if I could have gone back and seen that lesson and even maybe brought over my brother or sister and they could have said hey you know this is what you do um, just to be able to have that backup support and to be able to rewind as well so creative innovative working together fostering relationships now you're going to come back to the school in the fall even stronger and better um, and better able to live better now. So, all right. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Um, that's it for today. Thanks again for, for Jamie and Amy for sharing what they're doing at Guyville Catholic Junior Senior High School and at Conisbury High School. Thanks so much for all you do, and we'll see you next time.